People have asked me well, if there was one thing that we could change that would make uh, the biggest difference, what would it be? Uh, it wouldn't be a magic pill, and it's uh, not going to be easy, but it's going to be like a lot of good things that we have to do in life. It means changing a bad habit. When I look at hundreds of hours of videos of Japanese classrooms where they get high performance from ordinary teachers, and hundreds of hours of US classrooms where we get ordinary performance from very good teachers in many cases, I see the goal of the Japanese teacher is different than the goal of an American teacher. The American teacher looks at a problem they're going to use in a lesson and asks themselves, how can I teach my kids to get the answer to this problem? The Japanese teacher asks, what's the mathematics they're supposed to learn from working on this problem? How can I get them to learn that mathematics? Now those might not seem so different when you first think about it, but they are and we'll see some examples. So here's that question, the difference. How many, can I teach my kids to get the right answer? How can I use this problem to teach the math they're supposed to learn from it? Answers don't, just so you don't quote me wrong, Answers are essential. Correct answers are essential. This is not a talk against answers. But they're part of the process, they're not the product. The product is the math the kids walk away with in their heads and in their ability to do stuff. Wrong answers are part of the process too. Time and again in the Japanese classroom, you'll see, Jen discovered an approach that doesn't work. Jen, explain your discovery to the class. Jen explains the discovery to the class. Does everyone understand Jen's discovery? Now let's all figure out why it didn't work. Jen, did you figure out why it didn't work? Let's figure it out. When you do, it's actually often easier to get to the math figuring out why an approach didn't work than why an approach did work. Which is There's another reason they do this. We had a Japanese educator that we were working with not for the standards, this was an earlier project, who criticized us for treating, every, for treating this situation as Jen's problem. Something wrong with Jen, need to diagnose and remediate. That's not the first reaction in a Japanese classroom. First reaction is, Jen is the canary in the mine shaft. That approach that Jen discovered, any one of you might go down that path tomorrow or next week or the week after. And uh, I think, what's your name? Parker. Parker, he was like this. He got the answer real quick. He might have got the answer like that because he made lucky assumptions. They might be lucky assumptions he learned last year or whatever it is, but his understanding is not very robust. Next week, I'll give him a different problem. He'll make those same assumptions. They won't work for that problem. He'll be confused and he'll wind up where Jen is. So I'm treating Jen as a symptom of the whole class, not as an individual psychological problem. And so for Parker, what I'm doing is making his understanding more robust and deeper. 